Hello, darlings. I'm Anja, and you are watching Hey Anja Girl. Welcome to my channel. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. So, the title of the video says, How to Be a Loser. I promise you, promise you, promise you that I have one surefire way. It's not the only way, but it is definitely one surefire way for you to always be a loser. I know you want to know what it is. Well, a surefire way for you to always be a loser is to compare yourself to others. I know. I know. And the, uh, the thing about it is, is that I am more than sure, I'm positive, I'm absolutely positive that you have done it before, and I am 90% positive that you are still doing it even today. You're still comparing yourself. You still come up short. You still lose. You're a loser when you compare yourself. So what's so bad about comparison, you ask? Or maybe you didn't, but I'm going to tell you anyways. I believe that when we compare ourselves with other people, we are taking our eyesight from one of like gratitude and focus to one of obviously misfocus and it just comes from a very dark and sinister place. If you think about it, you cannot, you can't keep your eyes on your own plate if you have your eyes on somebody else's plate. And that's what comparison does. And then you're looking at their plate to see if they have as much, I don't know, meat as you do. Or if they have, if they do have more meat than you do, then you're not focused on the meat that you have on your own plate. You're focused on the meat that they have on their plate. Um, so comparison shifts our focus and it puts, shifts our hearts also from one of gratitude to almost like a complaining kind of spirit. And that's never a good thing. Also, there's like a feeling, like a deep, dark, sinister feeling that comes with comparison that makes you want to clutch your pearls or your imaginary pearls. Where are my pearls at? It's not a good feeling at all. Granted, everybody does it. It's still not a good feeling. Just because everybody does it, we have to cognizantly, I think it's wise for us to cognizantly shift our focus to stay on the straight and narrow. For example, I was comparing my hair texture to someone's hair texture that I saw in a picture. I believe it was on Pinterest or something like that. And so I started praying about my hair texture and just like, you know, that God would do some amazing things with my own hair. And I did not wait. Hey, darlings, my video shut off right there, but I really wanted to share my experience of comparison. So I have a real, I have a lot of hair. It's pretty dense. And when it's straightened, it's actually pretty fine. So I have a lot of it, but it comes out really fine when it's straightened. I spent so much time comparing my hair texture and density to those that I saw in photos that when my own hair was in front of me, I was not pleased with the product. And it took me renewing my mind to say, wait a minute, Andre, you prayed for beautiful hair and your hair is actually beautiful and it's really healthy. So this is just an example of how trash comparison is. Now back to the video. And I think a lot of people are just, they make excuses for what's going on, meaning comparison is seen as something that's more acceptable today with social media. And, you know, it's just something that everybody does, but nobody acknowledges it until the pain becomes too great. You don't really acknowledge the comparison until you're feeling crummy or crappy about your own life. And you didn't realize it's because you spent all this time scrolling and seeing all of these pictures that, you know, you're comparing other people's outsides to your insides. I actually have a scripture here and it's taken from 2 Corinthians 10, 12. Ooh, I actually have two. So the first one says, not that we dare to classify or compare ourselves with some of those who are commending themselves, but when they measure themselves by one another and compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding. 
Galatians 1.10 says, For am I now seeking the approval of man or God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. So that just goes to show that there is a conflict between pleasing man and pleasing God. And the way that that looks in our lives, or one of the ways that it can look in our lives, in our in our day-to-day -day life, is doing things that seem quote-unquote popular versus doing what God has specifically told you to do. And if you feel like you can't hear the voice of God, there are, the Holy Spirit will always kind of like give you an inkling or like there will be something like, hmm, maybe you know what, I should do this or maybe I should pursue this versus something that sounds really sexy or really cool. Even if you don't follow God, you definitely have the intuition to follow the things that you know for yourself to be true. How many times have we, okay, one thing about me is that I love, love, love old school Lifetime movies from the 80s, 70s, and 90s. I love them, and I love the ones that show, you know, how the kids have peer pressure, and they always know, like, you get a chance to see peer pressure played out. You get a chance to see the, just say, characters' facial expressions, and it's like, okay, mom said do this, but my friends are pressuring me to do this, and there's always kind of like that, <laughs> look that they have where it's kind of like well uh, uh, <laughs> I crack myself up where <laughs> they are like they can't they have to choose they have to make that choice that's kind of the same thing when it goes to comparison um and peer pressure they all really go hand in hand when you are cool within yourself and when you are doing what you know you're supposed to be doing and what's in your purpose, you won't have a need to compare your walk to someone else's walk because that is specifically your walk and your lane. And you will be so great in your lane as you are doing your thing. I love how today with the advent of social media, like everybody has an opportunity to do whatever. And we could say that, all of these um, industries are saturated. I, I notice people love to say, oh, the, the makeup industry is saturated. This industry is saturated. The fitness industry is saturated. But the awesome part about it is, is that if God has told you to do something specifically within that, you do it because there are people who need to see you specifically in that role. There was recently a meme that I saw and it it said something about, I think there were like six choices. And it was like, who would you want to be your mother? And there were old school African-American actresses. And I believe it like included some people like Felicia Rashad, Lynn Whitfield, Loretta Devine. Um, you know, it was some other ones or whatever. But what the whole point of it was, is that there were choices. If, and each individual person obviously resonated with one of the choices that were in the box that they were choosing. I specifically love, love, love Loretta Devine, so I would choose her. But that's how it goes. So we started talking about how to be a loser <laughs> and comparing yourself with other people, but we started getting into why you don't want to compare yourself and the reason why it's important to be in your own lane and what your own lane may look for you and also knowing that it may not be easy but it will always be good your own lane will always be good and sometimes i wonder if people are not okay with just good they want the spectacular and they want superstar not everybody is supposed to be a superstar not everyone is supposed to be, you know, Michael Jackson. Some people may be, you know, Jackie or um, Tito. Don't take it personal. Wait, who was that? Jermaine. All in all, if you do not desire to be a loser or practice loserish, loseristic ways, don't compare yourself. Now, granted, like I said, this is only one possible way to not be a loser. There are plenty and minty, but 
one way is to not compare yourself. Instead, we can actually think about how amazing it is to be in the lane that we're in. One of the things that I also really, really like to do, and I learned this tool a long time ago, was the act of writing or saying a gratitude list. Um, because when you're grateful, you don't have time to be checking out the other person's lane. You know what I'm saying? You're not, when you're running the race, like if you're so busy tripping off of what the other person is doing, that slows you down. So gratitude lists are super duper helpful because a gratitude list helps you to stay centered within yourself and focused on the things that you're supposed to be doing. Another thing with helping to not fall into the comparison trap is honestly just making the choice. Like, you know what? I will congratulate that person when I hear or see them doing something, but I will quickly divert my eyes back onto my own lane because that's where I'm supposed to be. So that's the end of this video. Honestly, go forth and remembering that we keep our eyes on our own lanes. That comparison is not only killer, it is a way to be a loser. And we are not losers. We are winners. We shall win. I hope you have a wonderful day. And thank you again for watching.